All right, there it says pharmacology, so welcome to pharmacology. But my, my intention in this class is that this is not one of your most important courses. Uh, it, there will be some questions on, uh, pertaining to pharmacology and medications on the national board. Uh, in general, everybody gets them right. I could probably tell you in the next uh, 15 minutes what those questions are and what information you need to know, which means that all the rest of the course is superfluous and irrelevant. But, uh, 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 but so uh, recognizing that this is not one of the most important courses, nevertheless, uh, most students over the years that I've been teaching uh, this, which is a lot of years, uh, ever, I've been teaching the pharmacology uh, class ever since uh, the dental hygiene program first came to West L.A. College. Oh, so uh, it, I don't know if you know the history, it, it actually was at L.A. City College. And then they moved in the, uh, I guess it was the early 80s. Uh, and so I've been affiliated since then. And how I got involved in it is they had, when they were over at L.A. City College, they had a, a kind of a, pharma, uh, a pharmacist teaching the class. And uh, uh, when they moved over to West L.A. College, uh, I guess he didn't want to bother traveling. Uh, from, uh, it was a distance, and I think he was an old guy, and he, yeah, I think he'd stopped teaching at that time. So, um, uh, I, I was at that time a young guy. I'm now probably as old as the old guy who stopped teaching, <laughs> but at that time I was a young guy, and I was, I had been, I, I had been uh, hired here to teach uh, physiology and anatomy, and some of you have unfortunately had to suffer through uh, uh, my classes, but uh, uh, my uh, research background was all in pharmacology, and, uh, and I was in grad school at University of California Medical Center in San Francisco. So uh, I, I can't say I was the world's greatest researcher, because if I was, I'd be doing research, but, I, but the research that I did uh, was actually pertaining to uh, the effects of different medications on electrical activity of different cells in the uh, body. So uh, I had a, a pretty strong background. I actually had uh, uh, two years of pharmaceutical chemistry that I took with the pharmacy students. I wasn't the pharmacy major or anything like that, but I took that and, and I've had a lot of pharmacology courses. So it, it, they needed somebody in an emergency. They said, uh, you know, they asked me, could I do it? I said, yeah, I could do it. I, I had actually taught pharmacology to both nursing students and respiratory therapy students uh, previously. So uh, anyhow, I, I've been affiliated with the program ever since, and it's been a great joy. It's really one of the best things uh, that happened to me in terms of uh, working here is just being able to teach uh, you, because you are really a wonderful group of students. Uh, it's, it's, you know how difficult it is to get into the program, and uh, the students just get better and better. So anyhow, the, the intent here is just to actually kind of make this not a, a low-pressure course, unlike some of your other classes, you made it through the first year. You did the hard part. The hardest part was the first semester, right? Second semester was maybe a little bit easier, not much. And I think that everybody will tell you that I think the second year won't be as demanding. And one of the reasons why it won't be as demanding is right now we're doing the pharmacology in the summer, so that's one less class that you would normally have in the uh, uh, fall. But uh, things kind of uh, start to become repetitive. Uh, and you'll start to hear a lot of the same stuff that you heard that was all new in the first year, uh, and you start to hear it over and over again. Now, uh, our goal in terms of pharmacology, uh, in terms of drugs, is uh, twofold. We want to learn not only the medications that are used in the dental office, uh, and that would include everything from antibiotics and pain relievers, uh, the analgesics, uh, anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, and so on, uh, that are relevant there, but also, uh, as you will see with the National Board, they give you case studies, and so they want you to be aware of the medications a patient is taking. And uh, as you will see, if you haven't already with your patients, uh, there's a lot of people taking all kinds of stuff, uh, especially antihypertensive medication and medication for diabetes, uh, and some antidepressant drugs, um, and, and so on. And so they expect you to know a little bit about the medications they're on. And some of the drugs, I won't say a majority of them, but a, a certain percent, uh, can have an effects on, the, uh, uh, on oral hygiene uh, and the mouth and, and so on, and to increase risk uh, or frequency of dental caries. Uh, I will tell you, I'll give you an answer to one question on the National Board right now. 
All right? It's very, this is one of the most important answers to the questions. The most frequent uh, side effect, adverse effect, that you will see medications have, anybody want to guess? Xerostomia. Yeah, xerostomia. So you already know it. So to the extent that sal salivation is important in terms of oral health and, uh, and affecting uh, the frequency of dental caries, there is a really high proportion of drugs that cause xerostomia. In fact, almost every antihypertensive drug, almost every uh, drug that's psychoactive that affects the brain, uh, usually causes xerostomia. So uh, there are some other medications we'll get to that have other effects. Uh, I, some of them I'm, get, I'm betting you already know. Does anybody know which medications can cause gingival hyperplasia, large major gums? Antibiotics. Um, all right, very good. I've heard the answers. There are two major drugs are Dilantin, uh, which is used for what? Seizure. It's an anti-seizure, although it can also be used for heart arrhythmias. And the uh, other are certain calcium ion channel blockers. Anybody know what they're used for? Hypertension. Hypertension. So uh, that, we do start to see some other drugs that have some other strange effects. There's also a, number, uh, a small number of drugs that uh, cause something, uh, and I'll, I'll have to write it down here, because, uh, uh, let's see if I... There are uh, a small number of drugs that cause, and the word is dysgousia. Has anybody, I, don't, I think I spelled that right, has anybody ever heard of dysgousia? Taste. A funny taste in the mouth. Sometimes a metallic taste, such as flagell and so on. So there are, you know, there are some drugs that do have uh, effects that are noteworthy and that they expect you to know on the national board. Well, I practically have already told you half the information. You <laughs> All right. So uh, if if on the uh, national board, if they have a case study and you've got some medication and you have no idea what uh, it does, and they ask you what should you be concerned about, your answer is xerostomia. So that's that's uh, oh, that's uh, just told you half the answers. So uh, let's see. all right. So uh, anyhow, coming back to uh, let's see where I am here. So uh, that's really the two reasons that we want to cover drugs is not only to understand the medications used in the dental office, but some of the medications that you, uh, your patients uh, are on. So uh, the, uh, this is on the website. I don't know if anybody downloaded it. Uh, you can just uh, download the syllabus for what it's worth. Obviously, I have listed here that we're meeting uh, on Fridays. I, uh, actually, what does it say? Uh, oh, it's actually scheduled for Saturday, which is interesting because I don't teach on Saturday. So, uh, but they scheduled it for Saturday. So I guess this, as bad as it is coming in in the summer, it's still better than coming in on Saturday morning. So uh, uh, they had a schedule for 9.35 to 12.50. Anyhow, uh, if you uh, need to reach me, the best way to reach me is by email. I check my email several times a day. Uh, if you leave me a phone message, I check my phone messages once a month. Um, so uh, I just don't like dealing with the phone. So we've uh, written on the syllabus, this course presents the basic principles of pharmacology, including pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. And uh, I think this bigger here. And we will be learning exactly what that means, pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics adverse reactions and contraindications of selected drug groups. Emphasis will be placed on those drug groups especially relevant to dental practice, including analgesics, anesthetics, nitrous oxide. We'll see if we have time. I know you've already had pain control classes and covered nitrous oxide. If we have time, I'll review some of this. Some of you may have forgotten the planes of anesthesia, uh, the stages and planes. Right? Does anybody know what uh, stage and plane you're supposed to use normally for nitrous oxide? Uh, okay, so it, it's, actually, it's actually stage one, plane two. Stage one, plane two. So if we have time to review that, I, it sounds like there's no need to review it. <laughs> um, 
So, uh, all right, and uh, uh, anyhow, anti-infectives, antibiotics, uh, an uh, anti-viral drugs. In addition, the most common classes of drugs the dental patient is taking in the management of common diseases, disorders will be covered, including autonomic drugs, cardiovascular drugs, antihistamines, anti-inflammatory sedatives, anxiolytics, antidepressants, hormones, and anti-neoplastic drugs. And we'll just see as time uh, permits uh, how many of this uh, we can cover. Uh, I think all of you have the Lexicon book. So look, there's a lot of drugs here. This is a lot, you know, we're not gonna do this entire thing. All right, so uh, there, we, we could, I mean, you know, obviously if you pharmacy students spend four years learning drugs, so uh, we can't cover in a few weeks what pharmacy students cover in four years. Um, all right, so uh, we don't care about SLOs, students learning computers. I don't care about them. Uh, they make us write them and nobody cares. They, I just, somehow they think that by writing that, all that in stuff, any, that affects teaching at all. I, I don't know. Uh, anyhow, the lecture outline is the main thing you needed, so um, you've all got that. And uh, we will have, uh, let's see, uh, two exams, two semester exams and one final. So three exams all together. And uh, I think that the two semester exams will be 100 questions each, so you just need one Scantron. I used to make them longer, I think I'll try to pop it at 100. Uh, I used to give more. The final, though, will be more than 100. And so uh, you'll need two scantrons for that. So altogether, you need about four scantrons for the course. So uh, I don't. I think that I don't know. Is pause open? This yeah. Yeah. is it. Okay. So you can get the scantrons there if you if you needed any. And uh, I've listed. Uh, there is a, a book that if you really desperately want to spend money, <laughs> uh, you can get this: Applied Pharmacology for the Dental Hygienist. Uh, as I said, it's a paperback. It's several hundred pages, not even that many hundred pages, and it's a, they sell them for like hundred and fifty dollars. So um, we don't want, we don't want you to spend that. Uh, the, you already have the Lexicon book. Uh, that's really the best resource uh, that you uh, you can use. Uh, and there's no need to get the PDR or physician's desk reference. Um, you're going to be, uh, you, there may be uses for the, uh, my website, including that I hope to have these uh, lectures up. I'll try to post them uh, within a few days after I tape them. And um, the, obviously the dates of these exams uh, assumed we were meeting in the fall. I don't know what our dates of the exams will be. I don't know how much we're going to cover on any given day or week because we're not meeting the way we normally do. So uh, we'll just kind of play it by ear, and I'll give you uh, uh, plenty of advance notice. So uh, the, the two semester exams, they're each worth 30% of the course grade. The final's worth 40%. Uh, so uh, that's basically it. Sometimes students who've had me for other classes say, well, do you drop one? No, we don't drop any in, 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 this, uh, in this class. Everybody does fine, OK? You're all hard workers. You wouldn't have made it this far if you weren't. Uh, everybody is going to get, uh, most of you will get A's, uh, maybe a few will get B's, nobody should get less than that. So uh, that's usually what happens. So, and everybody can get an A. Uh, so th those are the uh, cutoff lines as far as uh, the grading. Um, uh, uh, as far as attendance, uh, I'll have a sign-in sheet to, to, sign your, uh, to check your name off uh, when we do meet, but uh, we don't make a big deal as far as uh, attendance. Um, since this is being videotaped, I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to edit it out. Uh, the, uh, all right, so uh, anyhow, uh, we won't worry about cheating. Nobody's going to do that. And uh, th the dates, obviously, are not correct. But this is really the order of topics that we're going to cover, which is exactly the order that's in the lecture outline. So today, uh, in addition to introducing the class, we're going to start to present principles of pharmacology and drug legislation, and we'll see if we get to prescription writing, and then we'll get into pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, whatever those mean. And uh, after we get through the uh, principles, and these principles are very important because these are the vocabulary that we use to describe drugs, all the drug groups after that. And then we'll start to talk about the different drug groups, autonomic drugs, cardiovascular, respiratory, GI, anti-diabetic, uh, sedative, anxiety, uh, narcotic, analgesics, antibiotics, uh, uh, antineoplastic, and so on. 
So uh, the uh, main thing that I'm going to emphasize in this class is understanding the class of drugs, the class of medication, not the names. The, the names, uh, you know, just there's, the names are the most confusing part. There's so many names, they're hard to say, they're hard to write. But uh, I will start trying to explain all this naming for you. All right, so that's the syllabus. So that finishes that off. And, uh, and just a, a few words on uh, the website. So I, uh, this is a kind of a work in progress, and it needs a lot more progress, but, it, but I've made quite a bit. Uh, I started the website, I guess, about five years ago, four years ago. And uh, it's really in the last year where I, I, I've really expanded it. It's still a hodgepodge. I'm the webmaster. So I'm not, I'm not you know, I, I'm a, not a very knowledgeable about doing websites. So it looks kind of sloppy. But I've got a lot of resources on it. So I have it for uh, biology uh, and for anatomy and for physiology and for this class, pharmacology. And what I started to do this last year is to post uh, my lectures uh, as videos. I've now posted 135 uh, hour-long videos uh, on YouTube, and so they're linked. That's uh, for anatomy and bio and, and physiology. I'm still in the process of doing that. And uh, I, I actually checked uh, YouTube allows, they have what's called analytics, and they will tell you, you know, how many hits you've got all together. I've had over a million hits on my videos. And uh, some, of, some of my videos, uh, uh, the first one, the first video I ever posted was cellular respiration. Mm -hmm. And I have 117,000 hits uh, worldwide in, in a couple of years. So uh, actually the one that I posted most recently that's just skyrocketed is embryology uh, from anatomy. And I guess because, in fact, if you do a search on YouTube for embryology, I'm the number one first thing that comes up. So uh, I'm not the number one for cellular respiration. Salman Khan, <laughs> but he hasn't done a video on embryology, and uh, he's a great guy. Uh, uh, but uh, he hasn't done one on embryology, so I actually come up number one on embryology. But uh, what, uh, the uh, what we'll get to pharmacology up, I hope, this summer. And uh, there's really not a lot. There is some stuff on pharmacology on YouTube. You can find everything on YouTube, but. Not too much. So um, anyhow, uh, I, I generally don't use PowerPoint slides. If anybody wants, you know, if you miss at, from my lectures, if you'd say, boy, I'd sure like to have PowerPoints. So uh, you, can, you can, these are links to uh, PowerPoint slides. So if you want to have fun looking at them, here they are. And so uh, you could go through that and watch a blue screen and just see all this blue stuff. And then just pretend I'm reading them to you. <laughs> All right? Isn't that what usually happens with PowerPoint? And there's the person, Controlled Substances Act of 1970, and Omnibus Budget Reconciliation. Next. All right. I, I really don't like just doing presenting that way. But anyhow, those are PowerPoint slides. Um, there's a, I've posted a whole bunch of other uh, PowerPoint resources for anybody who cares. Here's a, a link that when you ever have blood work done on yourself or anybody you know, and you want to interpret those blood tests, uh, this, these are both very useful links to understand uh, what those blood tests are all about. Uh, if you want to have pictures of all the pills, let's see if this is working. Let's see if we're going to get pictures. Yeah, here it is. So you've got lots and lots of pages. Uh, 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 you could go and uh, look at all these pictures of pills. All right, this is great. All right. And this is actually what's in a PDR, a physician's nice. desk reference. So I've already linked it on my website. So, uh, I, I knew some, somebody who was interested in medicines, and they basically uh, took uh, color images of pills, and they uh, decorated their uh, room, their bedroom, with pictures of pills. <laughs> but, uh, all right. All right, so that's uh, uh, the uh, pill pictures, and... Um, uh, uh, these are some of my favorite uh, resources. Obviously, all of you had to know how to look up stuff uh, using Google, uh, but uh, among the, my favorite resources uh, for information on drugs, www.drugs.com uh, has wonderful uh, information. Uh, on herbal products, uh, here's one. 
uh, for information on nutritional facts uh, that, that, that appear on the labels of packages of food that you buy. This is from the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, something that I'm going to be telling you about, FDA drug safety communications. This is not something you really need to worry about, but there is constant, constant, every, every other day there's new updates from the FDA about medications. And it's a real challenge to keep up with this stuff. Um, so, uh, and I'm going to give you some of that, uh, some of these in just a moment. Uh, another resource that I like is uh, review articles on diseases and treatments from the American Academy of Family Physicians. Uh, these are very readable and they really explain whatever uh, condition, whether it's diabetes, whether it's epilepsy, whether it's a, a, a transient ischemic attacks, TIAs, whatever it might be. Uh, you can look it up and they give you pretty readable articles. Uh, another one, uh, another wonderful resource is the Mayo Clinic. Uh, the Mayo Clinic is considered one of the top five uh, medical institutions in the world, probably. Uh, and uh, you can basically uh, uh, find under education, actually health information. So you can look up uh, diseases and conditions, symptoms, drugs, uh, tests, procedures. It's all very readable and it's just one of the best resources. I only mention this because if you do a Google search and you just see all this stuff come up, you don't know for certain which ones are reputable and authoritative sources and which ones aren't. And uh, the Mayo Clinic is absolutely authoritative. So if, there's any, if you need to look up anything. Uh, another one, uh, the Center for Disease Control, the National Library of, Con uh, of, uh, uh, of Medicine, uh, the Human Genome uh, Resource. Um, let's see, I've, there's another one, let's see, I skipped, um, uh, I've got it here. Uh, another one, I don't know if I listed it there, if I'll, I'll add it, but uh, Johns Hopkins also has resources on it. Again, also one of the top five medical institutions in the world. So, uh, but the Mayo Clinic is a wonderful resource. Uh, and of course, uh, resources uh, for teeth as well. Uh, and uh, I think that's, uh, oh, and here if you want to practice questions, uh, I've got all kinds of links to uh, practice uh, review questions. Let's see, uh, what's this? All right, so here's a uh, practice. I'm not saying you need to do this. I'm just saying I've made it available. So here's practice questions with the answers on uh, all kinds of different topics. So uh, you could go through that if you want. Don't have anything better to do. Um, all right, so much for, uh, so much for the website.